Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming up here to the workshop stage. So today, we are going to be talking about Rare and about protecting and selling digital art. So we're going to start with the presentation with a short introduction to Rare, how it works, and how it helps artists, and then invite some of the technologists and particularly the artists that are part of Rare to come talk about the experience and the value that we create and how we use Ethereum in that mix. So as a starter, Rare is a marketplace for digital art secured by the blockchain. Now, there's a problem. And the problem for the digital artists is that digital art doesn't pay. Today, if you are a digital creative or artist, the primary means of making money is through freelance work or working on projects for other people. Finding autonomy and finding your own voice and selling your own art is something that is exclusive to the highest levels of the art world, where paper-based certificates of authenticity are the only mechanism for tracking what is and what is not a limited first edition artwork. The solution is to bring that to everyone, to tokenize certificates of authenticity, to prove what is truly rare, to prove from the artist with identifying data what is a first edition signed by the artist as a true and original creative work. And so the way that Rare works is that we have a marketplace where collectors come to purchase these certificates of authenticity for digital artworks. For, and those artworks are generated from independent artists, from brands we've signed onto the platform who have a creative or design-focused audience and sell limited edition artworks as part of their business, and increasingly moving towards the fine art world as well. So it's quite easy, and I'm gonna walk through the three steps of how this works, and then I'm gonna show it off. So the first step is very simple. An artist makes an artwork of any file type. So this can be photography, think digital photography, or videography and animation, where the fine art world with a physical canvas could never portray the true artistic creation, and it needs to exist on a screen. Or illustration, design, anything in which a computer is used in the creation process. Step two, quite simply, is the artist upload and then tokenize their art. Rare works directly with artists to certify that these are original and that these come truly from artists, that this is not someone who ripped off an Instagram photo from a popular feed and uploaded it. Rare stands as the certifying agent. We stand by every token that we create, and we work directly with the artists to make sure that only true works of art make it onto this platform. And how it works is that every artwork gets an ERC-20 contract with the identifying metadata and IPFS hash to the artwork. Now, what this means is that a independent artist can sell an addition, so a one of 10 or a one of 20 or one of 50, and all of those, each token in the ERC-20 contract represents one certificate of authenticity, and the contract identifies the artwork. Step three, collectors buy the art. And this is something we've worked very, very hard to improve because our space has previously suffered from a lot of design challenges and a lot of bad user experience. And so we really changed the game over the last year by making sure that a user can buy with a credit card or debit card an original artwork, that we create on-demand wallets so that immediately a new user without any software, without having to look at that dumb MetaMask fox, can jump right in and buy an artwork. And that the high resolution file is delivered via email and the token happens all in the background. It gets delivered right to the address that you create without the user being aware that a blockchain is thinking or processing while they're just trying to get the transaction done. And so with that, I'm going to actually walk you through exactly how easy it is. So up here right now, I have a great illustration from one of our artists you'll see in a second. Uh, this one's called Naked Ladies. It was a 2018 tokenized work by Michelle Rosenthal. And this is one of the many artworks on our platform. So you can scroll and constantly find new artworks that we have for display, and you can save them to your collection. Uh, you can create 
playlists of them for yourself to keep track of the ones you love the most. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you uh, how simple the checkout process is if you want to begin buying. So I'm gonna pull up a photograph taken by my co-founder, Kevin. And this one is called Rare IRL. And so again, there's stats on the artwork. You can see that 13 of the 1,000 that have been tokenized have been sold. And I'm gonna go in and buy it now. Now the checkout process is very simple. You probably have seen this sort of process from something like eBay or Amazon. We make intuitive language like a shipping address to identify where this token is going. So here we use our partners at Portis to create an easy on-demand wallet. I can scroll down. Again, if I've never been introduced to crypto before, I can create a free wallet which uploads the Portis widget and successfully adds a new wallet for me. This is username and password. It is so simple to create a new delivery address. Let's go ahead and select one of the ones that I already have on here. Boom. And then I can add a credit card, add a new one or use one that's saved from a previous purchase. And then I simply go down, confirm and pay. Let the transaction think for a second and congratulations, you just bought your first rare digital artwork. It's that easy. It's really that easy. And what's so cool here is that what we do immediately after is to guarantee to the user and show that this has been done, we send the user a receipt that includes a high resolution download to the artwork. So you have your sale receipt immediately that comes and shows the transaction you have a high resolution download where you can get the artwork if you want to use it for to display it on any other screen or anywhere else in your home. And then after the transaction updates on the blockchain, you're going to get a delivery notification that is quite similar and encourages you to go check it out saying that it's been delivered to your Ethereum address and you can go look at it in your Portis wallet. We also use OpenSea to integrate with the collectible so that it's very clear exactly what you own and you can then you know, use it on OpenSea if you later want to trade it or if you want to hopefully use it in one of our coming uh, smart TV apps, including our Apple TV app, where you can then show off all of your artworks in your home, in your living room, in a very familiar setting. So that's rare, that's how we work. Um, and then what we're gonna show next is um, after you know, I give a quick pitch for, again, our main mission here is to increase the total artistic output of humankind. We work directly with artists. We seek to be the most artist-friendly brand in this space because we know from our core that it is artists that are increasingly needed to communicate tough concepts and bring new technologies into the world. And Always, always, always our mission is going to be to stay directly with the artist and empower them in every way we possibly can. So with that, I'm going to introduce our panelists for the rest of the session. And our panelists today are going to be, it's going to be moderated by Judy Mam. Uh, Judy is an advisor to Rare as well as the co-founder of Dada. Um, and she is uh, a, one of the first people in the space, one of the first people to bring the blockchain to artists. Uh, next, we have Scott Gralnick. Come on up, Scott. Scott's the VP of Business Development at Portis and can speak more towards the technology that's used behind Rare. Uh, next up is Michelle Rosenthal. Uh, and Michelle is a artist on Rare's platform as well as a illustrator and vector design, uh, vector-based illustrator based out of Brooklyn. Uh, and then lastly, but not least, we have Marshall, Mighty Marshall, uh, and Marshall is another artist on our platform and is also a content creator uh, with social media and works in fashion. Uh, and then you have me, who you're already familiar with. So I'll join over here and then pass it to Judy. Thank you. Uh, that was a wonderful intro. And uh, I always say that I want to have John's voice because everything sounds so much better when he says it. But it, it's already good. So uh, we have not much time, and I have a bunch of questions. Uh, now that you were talking, I just wanted to ask if you could briefly, John, explain to us how do you ensure the truthfulness? You said that you make sure that the art is authentic. And so can you just tell us exactly how that is done and who? Is this decentralized? Who makes the decision to onboard an artist? 
Great question. So we first have an application process for our artists to go through, which is simply them showing their website, their portfolio, and proving that this is actually work that's created by them. Once we agree to represent them and stand behind them as an artist, we then do all of the tokenization, et cetera. So my co-founder, Kevin, uh, leads the artist committee of choosing and, and deciding which artists make it to the platform, but we stand behind every artist that we sell. Mm. And in this committee, is, is this a number of people or who, it's just interesting, like, because this is one of the biggest problems in this space is curation, uh, whether you decide to be decentralized or not, but who who vets the artists? Well, because our team is only seven people, uh, <laughs> our, our, our committee is equally small. So okay, that's Ke fine. Kevin leads point and uh, Jake and I help as well. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and what is the profit sharing? I mean, how, how is the profit distributed uh, between Rare and the artists? So 82% of all proceeds go to the artist. Um, we try to make sure that that's you know, a very healthy cut relative to the physical art world where artists can only sometimes receive 50% or in the worst case, 40% of their sales off physical artworks. So we hope that this is a much better situation for our artists. Great. So I'm going to go first. We're, we're going to talk money and then we're going to talk art. And then, you know, or we're going to talk money and art and money. So Scott, uh, I, I downloaded your wallet. It's really a much more pleasant experience than what, uh, like that little fox that we know. But can you explain why, why it's more pleasant and what are the main differences between what Portis is doing and the other wallets that we know? Sure. Um, so first, thanks for having us here. I'm really excited to be a part of this panel. Uh, to jump into Portis, actually, you don't have to download it. There's no downloads. One of the big problems in the space is usability. And if you look at the past uh, year plus of artists and technologists trying to use the dApps in the space, there were so many different barriers to entry to even use a dApp or use an application or use a marketplace like uh, Rare Art. With Portis specifically, we feel that uh, it's best to put the pressure on the developer. And so we built an SDK that we give to the developers or we give to the company. Now as a new user or someone that comes to the marketplace or an AirSwap or an OpenSea, all you need to do now is put an email and password and everything is happening on the behind scenes. So we try to synthesize anything that is difficult. So uh, no 12 uh, word thing and just crazy hash and... No, so the words are still there, but uh, that's if you want to export your wallet to somewhere else or if you want to back up your private keys. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all username and password. Mm -hmm. Great. So artists, um, I want to know a little bit. Uh, I saw, for instance, Michelle, you have a store on Etsy, right? And you are also selling on Rare. So I want to know for you, what is the main difference? What are the positive things that you, why did you decide to start to stare Rare Art? And to be truly honest, like what is, how do, how do the two ecosystems or marketplaces feel to you? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I have some things up on Etsy, but um, I don't consider Etsy a huge source of income. Uh, it's, I do everything in the computer, everything's digital, so I, it always feels a little regressive for me to then go and have to find a printer that I have a relationship with and make prints and sell prints for not that much of a markup uh, from the printing co uh, costs. Uh, so I've made prints every now and then, but um, yeah, I, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I, I've made prints just because I want to be able to sell my art. Uh, and so Etsy is one of the places I've done that. Um, I've also done it at uh, like craft shows, comic shows, things like that. Um, but yeah, Rare, Rare feels very different to me because uh, it's selling what the art actually is. is not like this hurdle that I have to go over to get it into a sellable form. Um, I... I mean, I have uh, very strong feelings that I make my art on the computer. It looks like it was made on the computer. I like it on the computer. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to look like a printmaker. I'm not trying to turn my digital art into printmaking. I love that about you. Because the problem is that that is really interesting that it's a strong artist's point of view because on the side of the collectors, 
a lot of people really have that hurdle that it's like, okay, so where do I hang it, right? So I think all of us in this space are trying to uh, get people past that hurdle. And it's interesting to me that you really are more like, you know, pushing towards the total, you know, being like digitally honest in a way and not expect uh, by product. So uh, do you find that people, you know, are following that thing or you still, it's like a uh, learning curve for people? I think people love, love digital art. And I think that, you know, I think that um, the art that people are sharing on social media have like, possibly a larger impact on society at large than uh, the art that you would see in a gallery. I think that like digital art's hugely important right now. Um, but at the same time, that's all free in the minds of the people. Uh, there's, there's still definitely a hurdle to going from that to thinking about, well, what does it mean to own digital art? Like what is, does ownership have the same kind of gratification that owning physical art has? So I think that's Definitely a huge, uh, yeah. huge hurdle. And have you found collectors that kind of are like-minded and that uh, you know agree with this? And do, do you have people who are collecting um, your work? I'm gonna say not so much yet. <laughs> no, well, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I if they're out there, I don't know that they've found me. Um, a, most of my work is working for clients. I, I do mm -hmm. uh, mostly illustration work. Um, and as far as that goes, uh, I think in the commercial space, clients love digital work and are yeah. leaning more and more towards work that um, is just going to be on their website. So it can look really digital and not physical and have a lot of value there. Uh, but yeah, as far as like, Taking that and bring it to uh, collectors, I haven't really felt it yet, but I, I feel like it's coming. It feels mm -hmm. inevitable to me. <laughs> cool. How do you feel about it, Marshall? Uh, can you tell us uh, what uh, made you also to decide to tokenize, or what is your like? Uh, I saw your photographs that you have on Rare. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. So I feel like I've been creating digital content long before the days of understanding what blockchain was or understanding what crypto was. Um, but I always knew Crypto Kevin, who Rare Kevin, everybody's talked about, John talked about, um, <clears throat> who I've always felt was like an early adopter yeah. of just like the digital space and how creatives can continue to create content and sell their ideas. Like Kevin's been pitching ideas since we were in like high school. It just <laughs> That's the person that he is. Yeah. Um, and when he talked about Rare and he talked about getting on the platform, um, I was like, cool, pitch it to me. I don't know anything about it, but let's go. You know, and then it's crazy to just see that the, the impact that work can have. Like, I have friends that live on the other side of the country who were like, yo, I picked up four of your pieces that were on Rare this week because of X, Y, and Z. And A, I didn't know they followed Rare. B, I didn't know they were keeping up with what I did. Um, and to know that, you know, it's like back to the Tumblr days of like the stuff that used to rip online and be like, that's dope, I want that in my archive. Yeah. You know, I wanna have that. I, I was the kid that had like desktop full of files unorganized of images that I had just drag and dropped or screenshotted because I was like, I need these in my mood board. I need mm -hmm. these in my reference. Um, you know, now it's like opening your rare profile and seeing that work or uh -huh. as you know, just mentioned an Apple TV app where you can potentially literally invite friends into your home and be like, yo, check out my digital yeah, collection. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now I, this reminds me, you, you, you have a, like a great Instagram page and like a following. How is that different? I mean, I've been with artists and they're all very focused on Instagram. And so, but Instagram is more a PR tool than it is a monetization tool. So how, how does that work for you? I mean, what, what differences do you see? Or do you, do you feel that it will come a time where like we're gonna be watching these platforms like Rare as we use Instagram, for instance? I feel like in today's digital world, I think everybody's trying to figure out how to monetize everything, right? But I think it'll go that way with, with Instagram. I think it'll go that way with all the platforms. But I think even at its core, it's like, I think about this too, especially in relation to minorities. 
how did you how do you see art like today? How did you see art 20 years ago? You went to museums that like not everybody has access to, right? Like not everybody can spend 40, 50 bucks and get into the Guggenheim on a Saturday. Um, but it's like in today's digital world, there are no limits. Like Instagram is the new, like the, the art explore page on Instagram might be your only trip to a gallery as like a young person. But that might open your eyes to like what art is and what young people are able to see in ways that you couldn't necessarily do in brick and mortar spaces. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's really interesting. You guys are so enthusiastic. Do you evangelize among your artist friends? Like, because I think that's what the space needs. You know, we're all. I mean, we have a, a you know a platform to. It's a different thing, but we need artists to understand that this is an option. So, do you do you say, hey, check this out, or like, how do we get um, how do we get artists to understand that this is happening? Uh. I want to say that yeah. John also made it extremely easy yeah. for the everyday person to go on and make their art and sell it on a platform where you don't even know it's blockchain running underneath it. Um, have your friends stated to you, like, oh, oh my god, I'm actually using blockchain technology? The nerds. Like, <laughs> I mean, and I'm right there with them. But it's, it's yeah, I've, I've had Kevin explain crypto to me like 30 times. And I can't even say that I'm, like, I got it. but. You're doing something for me that's not my area of expertise, and then my area of expertise is of value back to you, and we're like both winning. You know right. what I'm saying? That's like fantastic. People know Mighty Work because of Rare, and like I'm proud to be like, yo, Mighty's on Rare. Check out Rare. This shit is dope. And I think yeah. that artists really feel the difference when they see the money come in the wallet, and that has happened to us. Explaining blockchain, good luck with that, and uh, we had MetaMask, whatever. But the minute that money gets in there and they see that they sold a piece, I mean, the concreteness of that is pretty amazing, no? So. Yeah, and I would I would add to that that um, uh, I I feel like it's it's almost so good that it's cheating because, like I said, there's no there's no printing cost, right, there's right, no like right. material cost. Um, there's uh, it, the a uh, cut to artists is very generous, absolutely, um, compared to what you uh, would get in a gallery. Um, and there are no yeah, transaction it, fees for the collectors, John? Sorry. Uh, so we pay all the gas, yeah. we do all of that, um, and we pay the processing fees as well that are come with processing credit cards. So there's a small buyer's commission that the buyer side pays, but it's just to cover our costs. Cool. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to... Uh, no, I might have reached the end of my point. But it, it, it definitely is... Oh, and not to mention, I mean, I get a sale from Etsy, and it means I have to go to the post office. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. yeah no, you mean you don't like yeah. to go to the post office? Yeah. It's, but it's, it is a pleasure to, to have a sale on, on Rare, and, and the money's there, and that's the work that you made. Thank you to our thank panelists, so and thank you for everyone who came out. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys.